Hello guys, welcome back. Now in today's video we're gonna go over all there is to know about combat so you can learn, play well and know every little things from the most obvious ones to the most hidden ones, okay? First of all, I would like to start by analyzing uh, a fight of mine and we start by checking what's on screen. So that way we can address where everything is and learn about all of these the different icons. First of all, top left, we have our party with our energy and with our HP. HP is green, obviously, the numbers is actually how many HP we have. Some characters below their portraits are gonna also have some counters, some like little icons for their own core abilities. Some don't, some do. This is not a character guide, so let's move on. Below the HP, they're also gonna, also gonna have the energy bar the energy bar slowly slowly fills and after certain threshold which change between characters depending on what the energy is you are going to see red arrows when you are actually able to do your special skill uh, if you see the red arrows you means that you have at least one usage of your skill what is your skill your skill is your e i'm going to talk in pc in PC terms, but if you have a controller, you're gonna you're gonna see it as well on the screen, so it's not gonna be that much of a problem when you are playing. You will see your keybinds as well, but you can uh, rebind everything, by the way, in the settings. Now, uh, the energy is going to let you do your special attack. It's called the X special attack. That skill, which is E, your skill is you can press it even without the energy. It's going to be grayed out. So if it's grayed out, you know that you don't have energy, so you don't have necessarily to glance every two seconds. If it's grayed out, it means that you, if you do it, it's gonna do a normal special attack. Doesn't do anything much, it's just like a fancier basic attack. Uh, but if it's colored, and if you have enough energy, it will become colored. And now if you do that, now that's a proper skill. Does a lot of daze, does a lot of stun, which is the daze. Uh, it's going to do a lot of damage, so you want to wait until you have one, at least one usage, okay? Now, moving on, the other characters are still there, they're all tracking their own HP and energy, and then you see weird numbers that are, like, accumulating, X amount of points. While you're fighting, while you're dodging, do your things, you see below uh, the first character in general, on the top left, you can see some points. At the moment, it's like 0, 14 or whatever, uh, and they go up and up and up and up and up, thousand two thousand three thousand now at three thousand uh, this is where you want to wait now you now they have uh, three thousand now you are able to do the ultimate but the ultimate is not per character it's per squad so you need to be careful when to do the ultimate because only one character can do the ultimate so i would suggest most of the time the character that wants to do it is your strongest dps so that way you're doing you're getting the most out of it and then you need to rebuild your decibel, which the, what's the numbers are, they're called decibel. Once you're dead, you need to rebuild your decibel to 3000 to do the next ultimate. So it's one ultimate per party, per, per team. So be careful when you do it and who does it, okay? Now on the top right, you have in a boss fight case, the boss HP. Otherwise you're not gonna be, you're not gonna have anything in there and the mob hp and days bar is going to be on the model itself only it's not going to be on the top right it's only going to be uh, on the mob uh, the, the 3d model that you are fighting okay but it, it works the same for every encounter for every monster every enemy it's just like the position changes okay now uh, for the boss it's easier to track because it's very way bigger and it's in the top right you can see the hp of the of the boss and you can see a bar this bar is not energy it's days once you attack them and you parry their attacks and you dodge counter chain attack whatever it's going to gradually fill up once it gets to 100 percent the days bar will now uh, become a proper stun the boss doesn't move, it's, you're gonna have a next amount of time, a short amount of time for you to do a lot of damage. While the boss is stunned, they're also gonna take more damage. You're gonna see a displayed multiplier on the, the bottom of the days bar, and the days bar from the 100 that it was is going to slowly start depleting and go back to zero. When it goes back to zero, the monster wake up, wakes up again, stands up, and now it, it continues fighting. So during that time, with the enhanced multiplayer, Multiplier damage you want to unleash your maximum damage right and certain mechanics of the fight are easier to trig during these times for example chain attack once you are doing a finish finisher of a combo of basic attacks so you're doing the uh, 
X attack or you're doing the ultimate, this is where you enable the chain attack. The chain attack is a combo with your other teammates, right? So first it's going to be like in this case, let's say it's going to be Ellen, then it's going to trigger the chain, she's going to trigger the chain attack and now you can choose who do you want to combo for now? Do you want to combo into, uh, into Nicole or do you want to combo into Sokaku? Whoever you're going to have, I'm going to just use this team as, a, as an example for the, the video, okay? Let's say you switch to Nicole, Nicole is going to do their thing and then immediately going to continue the combo, it's going to ask you, okay, you want to go Sokaku now or you want to go uh, Ellen again? Go Sokaku, go Sokaku, Sokaku does uh, her thing and now she's going to trigger again for the... Uh, the last time on Ellen, Ellen is going to appear again, do her damage, and now you depleted all of your usages of your chain attack. Usually it's supposed to be three. Uh, there are cert certain uh, um, exemptions, but usually it's three. So you're going to do Ellen, then you're going to do Nicole, then you're going to go Sokaku, and then it's going to end, right? Now, this is also a good time for you to do your ultimate and unleash all of your skills if you have powerful skills that do a lot of damage or they apply build up. We're going to talk about what build up is in just a second. Let me finish talking about this first. So once the boss wakes up again and starts fighting, you also have other things that are happening. But before we go into those, let's talk about the bottom right of the screen. OK, so now the boss is wake, woke up again and is attacking you. OK, now on the bottom right, you have certain icons in order from left to right. It's just your basic attack. Then it's going to be the dodge. Then it's going to be your skill, which is grayed out if you don't have energy, colored if you do have energy to do at least one uh, usage. Then you're going to have a weird loop icon with a different sockets, like an, I believe it's six sockets. And then at, uh, above it, you have the icon for the ultimate. OK, now basic attack is going to be the basic attack, obviously, and there's nothing much to say. But let's talk about the dodge really quick. If you dodge an attack, obviously, and you follow the dodge attack with your basic attack is going to be a dodge counter. Dodge counter deals more damage and deals more days. And it's a nice way for just flowing with like, oh, I dodged and then I attack, right? Uh, very simple. Nothing, nothing super deep about it. The energy and the X attack, we, we talked about it, so we're going to skip it. And now we get into the juicier part of this uh, of this uh, combat, OK, which is the parry, the perfect assist and the various types of perfect assists. OK, now when you are fighting, you will happen to see certain attacks that are telegraphed are going to be shining with a X that is going to be either yellow or red. Let's talk about the yellow now. The yellow attack is a parryable attack. It means that if you see it and you press space, which is the loop button, uh, the key bind for the PC is going to be space, uh, unless you rebind it, but you know what I mean. You press it and now you are going to trigger a perfect assist. The perfect assist is when another character on your party jumps in to block the attack and by blocking the attack, now you take no damage. The boss takes days damage or the enemy takes days damage. And now you can decide to follow up with a proper attack by pressing the uh, basic attack. It's going to do a, a reactive parry. It's going to do the parry and then you're going to attack. OK, now. If you have a ranged character, certain ranged characters, or if you have a melee character, the melee character is going to block. Certain ranged characters also are able to block instead of dodging, uh, for example, Nicole. But if you're using someone like Billy and you press uh, the, this, um, this parry attack, this parry, this parry button, it's not going to block it, but instead it's going to dodge it, right? So now that's the evasive assist. The, the block one is called defensive assist. The dodge one is called the evasive assist. Block is defensive and then you can retaliate with your with your with your own damage. And the evasive assist is just dodging, basically, and then you can attack as well. But it's uh, it's different depending on who you are using on the on the on your team. OK, now this happens when you are pairing a yellow flashing attack. If you don't have enough points on your parries, you are not going to be able to dodge it and the the X is not going to be yellow anymore, it's going to be red. OK, so why are we losing uh, this parry? What do you mean I do, with, when you don't have enough uh, points? Because every time you parry is minus one point. 
If it's a mega attack, it's going to be even minus two points. Uh, because you, you need some energy, let's say, to block the attack. So if it's a decent attack, it's going to be one. If it's a mega powerful attack and you block it, it's going to be minus two. And that's why the parry bu button has six uh, points on it, six sockets. Because you need to be careful how many times are you parrying. If you're pairing too many times, then you're going to get tired, let's say. And you cannot do that anymore over and over and over and over. Otherwise, the game would be too easy, I feel like, right? So I feel like the, the reasoning was that. So during those times when you don't have sockets, how do you get more points, right? How do you get more points? You get more points by uh, doing chain attacks and by doing ultimate. The ultimate gives you three points, replenishes three points, and the chain attack gives you one point. So if you keep doing that and you dodge instead of parrying uh, and you accumulate more points, now you are able to parry again. But there are certain mega ultra giga attacks that are not parryable. You cannot block them. They're unblockable attacks and they will always flash red. In those cases, the only thing that you can do is to just dodge and then attack them after you dodge. If you try to parry, you will take damage. So now let's briefly address what happens when you don't block in time or you or you, you mess up, uh, you don't dodge in time, you get hit. Now you get a reactive assist, okay? When you take damage, you might get knocked back or super knocked back or get fly, you start flying off the screen because you got knocked back so hard, you just like tumble back, right? In that case, Instead of waiting for the character, because it's now stunned, you cannot play the game in the, during those, this animation because you, you got destroyed, you also trigger the reactive assist. The reactive assist comes into clutch and you can press the same button that you used for parry to call in one of your other team members to tag in. And you, that's the reactive assist. You It's going to show you at the bottom right, oh, do you want to call this character since you're knocked down? Yes, you press it, they come in, and now you're playing those, and they come in and they start fighting instead of you. So that character can recuperate and can, they can uh, pick themselves back up while, while you're playing another one. So that's the reactive assist. So when you take damage, that's what's happening, okay? So now... Uh, we are we we've covered the basics now. Let's go ahead and talk about anomaly build up really quick. The anomaly build up is uh, pretty easy, pretty straightforward, but there are certain things that you would need to take care about, you need to worry about. Okay, so the anomaly build up is when you are applying an element on the enemy. When you're applying the element on a, on an enemy that is weak to your element or that is at least not resistant to your element, you are going to eventually build up this, um, this uh, status, this elemental status, which is called anomaly build up. The anomaly is the type of, uh, of element that you're building up, and build up is the fact that it's uh, accumulating on the enemy. Now, by doing this over and over and over and over, in this case, like eyes, you're like applying eyes so many times, you are building up anomaly by default. There are some characters that are more specialized in anomaly build up, such as the uh, anomaly, straight up anomaly uh, class, such as like Grace. Uh, but all the characters, everybody that has an element is going to give anomaly build up. It's going to make maybe take a little, a little more. After you, the build up reaches the maximum is going to trigger an element anomaly build up okay it's not build up anymore an element anomaly the anomaly in this case is going to be freeze and if you keep applying freeze it's going to turn into frostbite okay now this is one element but what happens if you build up different elements at the same time when you are applying different elements at the same time let's say you apply freeze first and then you switch to billy and you or cotton and you you are applying assault um physical you're going to trigger a special combo between the two a special interaction interaction between the two elements which is going to call the disorder right disorder is going to replace the first anomaly with a second anomaly and this replacement is going to do a lot of damage to the enemy and replace it with the second anomaly so if you are applying freeze and then you apply anomaly uh, for physical which is assault you're going to switch freeze with assault 
and in the, the 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 act of switching is going to trigger this order which is going to do an explosion of damage on the enemy and it's going to take a lot of that a lot of damage okay uh, that's that one can be used efficiently to deal a lot of damage and to speed run a little bit because the damage is way higher than any other quick skill that you could have done in the, the same time okay so if you don't if you're struggling to make like a mono element you could do something like that to actually get some new um some more damage in okay so that's important there are different anomalies of course one for each element so uh, it's going to be ice it's going to be freeze into frostbite uh, fire is going to be burn physical is going to be assault electric is going to be shock and ether is going to be corruption okay so keep that in mind uh, they all do damage some of those do also status ailment for example freeze is gonna freeze the enemy they're not gonna move burn is just gonna do a dot permanent not permanent but like a very consistent dot on the enemy uh, assault is just built up into a final explosion doesn't do anything on the monster just an explosion at the end uh corruption is another dot for example but now you know the basics of combat so now you should be able to do well in Zelen Zone Zero. Uh, now the only problem that is going to stop you is kill issue. Hopefully that's not going to afflict you specifically. But uh, if you do, then you just have to practice. You know, it's that easy. So learn what is happening. Learn how to team building. Uh, learn which which class does what which one you want to bring in which one you have which one you should pick it up faction bonus and stuff like that if you want to know all of these things there are other videos on my channel and there are going to be more videos on my channel uh in the future because i plan to cover the game uh, up until release and after i'm going to stream on twitch uh twitch.tv forward slash jagazin uh, I'm gonna do more videos about it, so you know, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do on the channel if you like the content, if you want to see more ZZZ videos. Uh, but that is it. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you like it or not, or if you have anything to add, else to add on the combat that I forgot. And see you next time.